Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and we are back looking at potential high-speed rail routes between city pairs in the United States. In this video, we'll take a closer look at Atlanta, Georgia and Charlotte, North Carolina. The Atlanta Metro is home to 6.2 million people, making it the eighth largest metro in the United States. It is poised to move past Philadelphia and Washington DC into the number six spot within a few years. Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport is the main Delta Airlines hub and is the busiest airport in the country. Atlanta has a diverse economy and is home to the headquarters of many recognizable companies such as the Home Depot, UPS, and Coca-Cola. The Atlanta area also has MARTA, which is comprised of heavy rail, light rail, and a bus system. The Charlotte Metro has a population of 2.8 million and is the largest metro in North Carolina. Charlotte is home to Charlotte Douglas International Airport, which is an American Airlines hub and the 10th busiest airport in the country. Charlotte hosts the headquarters of Bank of America and Truist Financial. It is the second largest financial center in the United States behind New York City. Charlotte's mass transit system is known as CATS. It includes bus service, a streetcar line, and an expanding light rail system. Their combined population of 9 million is the largest of any major metro pair in the Southeast United States and among the fastest growing in the country. This concept has already gone through an official route analysis process. The route I'm choosing along Interstate 77 and 20 through Columbia, South Carolina and Augusta, Georgia was investigated but rejected during this process. Three routes proceeded to the Tier 1 environmental review process. This process looks at routes at a fairly high regional level. A preferred alternative was chosen and the concept received a record of decision, which means it's ready to proceed to Tier 2. Tier 2 is a lower level, more local look at the route. It's similar to what I'm doing in these videos, but the scope goes way beyond just the routing. The official proposed route is mostly newly cut right of way roughly 10 to 15 miles south of the Interstate 85 corridor with a quick jog to hook up with Greenville Spartanburg International Airport in South Carolina. This will cut through potentially thousands of properties and require a lot of eminent domain use and litigation. Generally, we're trying to avoid that in these videos. Now is the perfect time to bring up our high-speed rail guiding principles, and one is that we want to stick to existing rights of way to avoid delays in construction. Also, this plan would like to enter Atlanta from the east on existing rail rights of way for about the last 40 miles. One reason I did not opt for an Interstate 85 approach is that the final 15 miles will be very difficult and require significant destruction. Here are some examples of places where there simply isn't room to add a dual track electrified line to the existing right of way. Thanks to miles of frontage roads, Interstate 85 loses its utility unless significantly altered. This approach may require a dozen or more miles of tunnels. They also plan to use the existing rail right of way to get from downtown Atlanta to the airport. But as you can see, this right-of-way is completely filled by CSX and MARTA. Something would have to give. None of these obstacles are insurmountable, but these solutions could be expensive and face local opposition. The path I have chosen is longer and it does not go through the Greenville-Spartanburg Metro, which is the largest in South Carolina. However, my proposed route is fast. Instead, it runs through Columbia, South Carolina. That metro is about 150,000 smaller than Greenville Spartanburg, but we also pick up the Augusta, Georgia metro, which gives us a total of 500,000 more people served. The Charlotte, Columbia, Augusta, and Atlanta metros total about 10.5 million people. As a bonus, Columbia and Augusta also have large army installations, which surely could make use of quick connections to major airports. 
I'm going to provide two options here, airport to airport and downtown to downtown. I couldn't decide if downtown to downtown is worth it, so let's talk it out in the comments. We'll get to the downtown extensions at the end of the video. We are starting at Charlotte Douglas International Airport. The station would be about a mile from the terminal. A shuttle or short tram could handle that. The station would be next to Wilkinson Boulevard where Katz is planning to build their light rail Lynx Silver Line that would provide a direct connection to downtown Charlotte if we skip it. We immediately join up with Charlotte's Outer Ring Road Interstate 485. Interstate 485 is interesting because it might be the only ring road in the country that has ample room in the right of way all the way around and a geometry to support mostly higher speed travel. We're only going to use a part to get to Atlanta, but this ring road combined with Charlotte's central location in the Southeast High Speed Rail Corridor could position it to be an important junction. Speaking of the track geometry of Interstate 485, let's take a look at our curve radii reference chart. This is for a non-tilting train. This is about eight miles out from the airport. We're generally aiming for 90 to 110 miles per hour in urban and suburban areas. This 2,500 foot radius curve would have about a 70 mile per hour speed limit. Trying to improve this isn't worth it at this point in the route. The route can accomplish 125 miles per hour from the 70 mile per hour curve until it hits open country about 20 miles further south after turning onto Interstate 77. On the way, we will stop along the southern shores of the Catawba River in Rock Hill, South Carolina. This station would be well placed to capture traffic from the southwest corner of the Charlotte Metro, about 20 miles from the airport. There is room for walkable mixed use development, including a mile of riverfront property. At an average of about 85 miles per hour, time to the airport would be 15 minutes. Our curve to the south just manages 125 miles per hour for through trains. Three miles further south, this freeway curve is not adequate for a 125 mile per hour train, but it's worth retaining speed here. The solution is just squeezing through a logistics park on Viaduct for about a mile before returning to the freeway right away. After the junction with US-21, things are wide open to the outskirts of Columbia, 50 miles away. A train could sustain 220 miles per hour in the freeway right-of-way with little alteration. Here's a look at one of the more severe deviations necessary to retain top speed 20 miles north of Columbia. In the northern Columbia suburbs, 125 miles per hour is once again attainable in the Interstate 77 right-of-way until we hit this curve, transitioning to South Carolina Highway 277. This can be rectified by demolishing a church, a nursery business, a couple of houses, and running through the area on viaduct. Plenty of land in the area for remediation. Curves into downtown Columbia on South Carolina 277 will slow to 90 and then 70 miles per hour. Once in the downtown area, the train would need to go underground. This could partially be accomplished with cut and cover under Bull Street. There are many possibilities for station locations. I picked the one I thought would be most central considering the University of South Carolina. Columbia is the capital of South Carolina and the center of a metropolitan area home to about 830,000 people. Transit in Columbia is limited to bus service, but many areas are quite walkable as is. Tunnels necessary to get to this point will limit speeds through here to 60 miles per hour. From downtown Columbia, we want to get to the Interstate 20 right-of-way, which heads west into Georgia. This route to Interstate 20 is about six miles long, a little tricky, and includes a 1,700-foot bridge over the Broad River. But the geometry would allow 125 miles per hour without issue. Total distance under 70 miles per hour through Columbia would only be three miles. 
125 miles per hour can be retained through the western Columbia suburbs until opening back up to 220 miles per hour, about 20 miles west of downtown Columbia. Much like Interstate 77, this condition persists along Interstate 20 without much effort, in this case for a distance of 45 miles until reaching the outskirts of the Augusta, Georgia metro area. Augusta, which is on the border with South Carolina, is probably most famous for being a stop on the PGA Tour and has a metro population of 610,000. For various reasons, it would be exceedingly difficult to reach downtown Augusta here at speed, so my station location of choice here is next to Interstate 20. This location is actually more central to the metro area and more convenient to nearby Fort Gordon. There is some mixed use development potential here. The nearby mix is also more interesting than is typical for a suburban interstate exit, including a hospital. Just west of this proposed station is a 19 mile stretch of dead straight interstate. This is one of the longer interstate straights in the entire country. Because of this, a high speed train running through here could be back up to 220 miles per hour before leaving the Augusta Metro. Interstate 20 is somewhat windy aside from this, but in each case sufficient land exists near the interstate curves to create 220 mile per hour curves for a train. Here are a couple of the more egregious examples. This condition exists for nearly 100 miles until reaching Covington at the eastern edge of the Atlanta Metro. Now that we're in the suburbs, we're okay with 90 to 110 miles per hour, and these two curves can just barely be straightened out to a 110 mile per hour standard. For about 13 miles between Covington and Stonecrest, the freeway right-of-way is narrow, constrained on both sides by frontage roads, and there is just enough room to run through here on a combination of viaduct, pushing back frontage roads 20 feet, and adjusting the freeway. And now it's mall time! I'd like to have a station in the Atlanta suburbs to better serve the connection to Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport. Here we have a regional mega mall in Stonecrest, Georgia, with the astoundingly creative name of the Mall at Stonecrest. Clearly development around this mall has stalled out, and the mall itself has far too much parking. This mall has seen better days, but is not on its last legs. It's just over-designed, so let's give this area more purpose and help fill out the space. CSX right away is on the other side of Interstate 20 for a potential connection to commuter and regional rail. Stonecrest has a population of 60,000, with about 200,000 in a hypothetical station's serviceable area. Returning back to Interstate 20, nine miles closer to Atlanta, our route hooks up with Interstate 285, which is Atlanta's ring road. While not quite as well suited as Interstate 485 around Charlotte, this freeway does have some utility to serve a hub and spoke model in the future, at least part of the way around. We're going to utilize it to get to Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport. Seriously, it would be okay if some of these places had fewer words in their names. Onto the airport area. One curve will keep the train under 70 miles per hour within seven miles of the airport station, which is similar to what we settled for in Charlotte. A second curve is limited to 40 miles per hour, but is less than two miles from the station. Given this proximity and the cost associated with getting this curve to something like 70 to 90 miles per hour, let's settle for this short, slow section. Generally, we'll want to trench here to avoid conflicts with nearby runways. Extra box culverts were built under the southern runway, so all we need to do there is come back to ground level briefly to utilize one of those. The platforms would be ground level, the station would replace two outlying parking lots. The station could hook up with the airport tram there. 
The airport tram connects to the domestic terminal and also car rental and a convention center on the west side of Interstate 285. The airport's domestic terminal also features a MARTA heavy rail station that leads to downtown nine miles away and provides access to the entire MARTA system. We've made it from Charlotte Douglas International Airport in Charlotte, North Carolina to Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport in Atlanta, Georgia via Columbia, South Carolina and Augusta, Georgia. Let's take a look at travel times. Airport to airport, that's 314 miles at an average of 173 miles per hour on an express for a time of one hour and 50 minutes. Charlotte, North Carolina to Columbia, South Carolina, 93 miles at an average of 162 miles per hour for a trip of 35 minutes. Atlanta to Augusta, 145 miles at an average of 179 miles per hour for a 50 minute trip. Augusta, Georgia to Columbia, South Carolina, 77 miles at an average of 171 miles per hour for a time of 30 minutes. Let's talk Turkey. What is this rather speedy train going to cost? Here is a quick overview of my methodology. Keep in mind this method exists to allow me to create an estimate using nothing more than Google Maps and a calculator in about 15 minutes. It is to be taken with a grain of salt, but should be within 10% of a more sophisticated estimation. For this airport to airport route, my estimation is $39.6 billion, a slower train that sticks more closely to the interstate right of way would be about $6 billion cheaper. Considering the overall population served, this is similar to one of the better routes in my Chicago Hub Network video. Check out the card if you haven't seen it. Given the potential to expand this into a region-wide high-speed rail system, I give it a thumbs up. Now let's look at extending the airport to downtown in both Charlotte and Atlanta. Let's start with Charlotte. We'll come out of the airport station and work our way off the airport property, transitioning from elevated to ground level and onto the Norfolk Southern right-of-way. This best responds to what I can ascertain will happen with the future Cats Link Silver Line. Due to some slower speed curves in the Norfolk Southern right-of-way, this five and a half miles would be limited to about 75 miles per hour and would make the trip between the airport and Charlotte Gateway Station in about five minutes. There, our route would hook up with the Lynx Silver, City Lynx Gold Line Streetcar, Bus Service, and Amtrak. This poses the question, what is a five mile long express connection worth here? And what is the knock on effect of connectivity at Charlotte Gateway Station? I have the cost at 1.2 billion. Now to Atlanta. Our route goes back into a trench briefly to get under several merging lanes. Once north of the airport, the route will need to rise up on viaduct, allowing this otherwise 60 mile per hour curve to be cut short. Still on viaduct, we'll cut through this nasty sub 40 curve by demolishing a few businesses including a Pizza Hut. After that, the route would travel through Atlanta Metropolitan State College for about 2,000 feet. This would require the destruction of a house, a small parking lot, and a small campus building. This means we'll likely need to pay for a larger parking lot and building to make up for it. Slightly north of that is the most destructive this entire route gets. We'd need to take out about 16 houses next to the freeway to make room for our tracks. There are enough vacant lots in the immediate community to correct for that if need be. Most of this would be on viaduct. After that, the route would cut and cover through some parking lots and under streets until finally going into a tunnel just south of the intersection of Interstates 20 and 85. 
The route would complete a mile later at or near the planned Centennial Yards development. This is a huge mixed use development. The station would also easily interface with MARTA, which has a station across the street. The route from the airport to downtown Atlanta would be nine miles and take about seven minutes at a top speed of 110 miles per hour, restricted mostly by grade changes. I estimate the cost at 3.1 billion, with tunneling under downtown Atlanta being a big component. This renders a downtown Charlotte to downtown Atlanta express time of two hours and average speed of 164 miles per hour at a cost of 43.9 billion. Is it worth it over the 39.6 billion airport to airport cost? Is it necessary if both metros possess transit systems that can do the same thing at slower speed? Duke it out in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this tier two style route analysis for high speed rail between Charlotte, North Carolina and Atlanta, Georgia that has already been rejected as part of the official process. Personally, I think they made a mistake and that this route deserves another look. If you have any opinions about this video or just high speed rail in general, please leave them in the comments. Next up is something special to celebrate the approach of 5,000 subscribers. I'm going to keep it secret for now, but I think train and infrastructure fans will enjoy it. More Federal Railroad Administration high speed rail corridor and city pair videos to come. I'm also coming back to this Atlanta Charlotte pair to take a closer look at the preferred alternative and compare it to the route I liked in this video. And of course, another Stu's news is coming in a couple of weeks near the end of the month. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big, beautiful freeway.